Hi everyone! Welcome again to Bikini Design Club. Today I will be showing you how to assemble and how to make one of the versions of our latest pattern. The pattern, the pattern is available uh, on our online store at bikinidesignclub.com and this is actually part of a pattern because in this pattern I will include five or six different versions of the top. So this is a top. Uh, so this is one of the versions that will be included in the pattern. Um, you can uh, wear this, as you can see, this is the main top, this is the strap, this is the lower strap, we will have a fold here, this is the lower strap of the front, and then for the back, let me just put this here, so for the back, I have here, sorry you will hear the train now passing by, it's Saturday, but it, we have so many trains. And then we have our back piece here. This is uh, a strap that we will make to tie a little knot on top of our back. And this is the strap uh, for uh, the lower part of our back, bot uh, back top piece. So let's start by cutting the fabric. Uh, this is this can be reversible. I'm gonna do it with two layers of fabric, so you can also do it with two layers. So let's get started and let's start cutting the fabric. So don't think that our pattern is going to have handwritten uh, instructions. Neither the lines here will be so thin. This is actually just my uh, draft pattern. I still haven't prepared the pattern for the store. So I'm uh, filming this way, way before releasing the pattern. So never mind uh, that uh, may, you may think this is odd, but finally when you buy the pattern, it will be perfect. So let's start cutting the fabrics. So I've decided from now on that uh, when I'm doing these videos, I will start not filming certain parts. Uh, even if I put it fast forward, I think it's a lot a waste of time for you and for me to keep filming, even if you're not even learning anything. So I will skip some parts, uh, sometimes like cutting the fabric or sewing straight bits on my overlock. Well, I don't think it's worth uh, getting on camera, so I will start removing that. But you will also find some detailed videos on how to do certain things if you don't know how to, like straps and etc. and other details. So um, don't be scared, you, you can still follow uh, the videos and you can still do everything. I'm just not going to um, put it on camera everything. Uh, all the patterns already have a uh, seam allowance included. Uh, in this case, I'm still thinking if I'm going to show the seam allowance on the patterns or not. Uh, in this case, uh, I included a seam allowance of 8 millimeters, but it will be written on the pattern how many millimeters I gave. Um, it is supposed to be one centimeter if uh, you are working for the industry, at least that's what I've learned lately because I don't know if you know but I'm just an amateur maybe like you that are watching the video so I'm always learning and I'm still learning and I do a lot of mistakes but I will share them anyway so I'm gonna cut my front I used the fold line to place my fabric as you can see my grain line it will be marked on the pattern uh, it's uh, vertical and it's uh, it matches the the fold so in this case i just fold my fabric i place the fold on the fold of the fabric and i just need to cut uh, on the exact place where i have my pattern So now that I've cut it, all my pieces on my exterior fabric, the other side will be white. So I will start using the same pieces and cut the white. I'm not gonna tape it, it's just cutting the fabric with the patterns. Actually I'm gonna share some ideas while I do this, so I'm gonna film it. Um, I, I'm just an amateur, as I told you before, but I always like to do uh, everything that I do. I like. I like things to be the most perfect that I can, so that's why I'm always trying to learn new things and to improve my work. 
So when I start doing patterns, uh, I realized recently, I mean, from the beginning that of course I still have a lot to learn and um, I'm in a group from Stuart from Pattern, Pattern Online School that I think you should all join on Facebook and we were discussing the way that we present patterns. Uh, we were actually discussing this because I've tried this before uh, on with us for, for our uh, BikiniDesignClub.com and actually um, it was not very welcome for, from many of you. It's the way that we print our patterns. Well, um, I decided anyway that we all need to step up a little bit. Uh, I mean, we are not babies and we don't need to be fed. So I believe that we all can learn. And if I could learn how to print my, my, my patterns uh, from a poster instead of an A4 with all the letters and scissors and everything like if we were babies, I think we are better than that and I think we can do it. So uh, I will release the new patterns uh, on the new method of printing. I know uh, we have some resistance, this applies to me too. I uh, also uh, have lots of questions and on the in the beginning I wasn't able to print the patterns that I bought from Stuart uh, for the posters, but I had to find a way. When you don't know something, what do you do? at least for me what what do i do i learn so if uh some of you don't know how to print the pattern i have a video on youtube here on the channel um explaining how to do it if you find it hard and in your printer you don't find the option for poster this happened to me also on my home printer uh so i subscribed an a, a, adobe pdf uh, uh signature something well I don't know exactly how to explain you I know that I googled and I searched searched until I was able to do it and now I can print uh, patterns from all shapes and sizes and even if it's a poster with lots of um, big poster like we are doing now it's easy so I'm gonna start uh, giving you the patterns uh, in this format so big ones you it's a poster and you print and I'm gonna give you the patterns nested before I gave you the patterns separated by files because I believed that uh, it would be a good option for uh, all of you to, for all of us, to print only the pattern that we wanted. But then I had a poll on our group and many people uh, said that they like to and they need to scale the patterns and then it's easier for you to scale the patterns if you have the patterns nested, the graded sizes nested. Uh, so what I'm going to do on the, the patterns from now on and with time I will update all the old ones I'm gonna release the patterns uh, with nested uh, grading sizes many more sizes than before instead of going from XS to XL we will have sizes from 2 to 20 and I will have a, a size chart on the website and you can see the size chart and choose accordingly. So you, have, you will have less need for grading yourself because it will already be made for you. So I hope you all understand why I need to do this. This is much easier also for me. I have to spend my time designing patterns instead of uh, making files and separate files because I know that we are all uh, good enough and intelligent enough to learn how to print posters. So please, if you aren't able to print the poster, you, maybe you can try and ask for some help for a technician or someone that understands computer. Uh, I will not be able to answer you because I also had to Google it. Um, but I think you will make it. So hopefully you will be able to get all our new patterns with so many different uh, sizes and much more perfect than before. Uh, and that's it, I'm gonna stop. So let's just check we have everything. So we have two backs for one side, two for the other, two fronts, two straps that I cut it uh, on this fabric, it was an option, uh, two, strap, two straps for the front, Two from the self fabric and for the lining, uh, four 
the top straps here. Uh, this is two for this in here, so two from white and two from the pink. And for the for the knot that we are gonna make here, so since this is a folded uh, pattern, I just need two. Okay, so let's start assembling and sewing our pattern. Uh, in this case, what I will do, I will start by pinning my darts and sewing them. How do we do that? That's a question that some of you may have, so I will show you in detail. Probably not the sewing, but I will show you in detail how to sew the darts. So the darts are slightly curved, as you might have noticed. We just need to fold uh, the fabric like this. I'm going to pin here and then and then uh, we are going to the straight stitch machine and uh, be beginning uh, with the starting on this side, the outside, I will do half a centimeter line parallel to the curve and then when I reach the, the, the edge here, very very near the edge, I will continue my stitching for about half a centimeter uh, and then when I stop, instead of doing a back stitch, I will leave some thread uh, and then I will do two knots by hand and then I cut. This is the way that I found and I learned it's uh, nicer to put your uh, the, 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 the tip of your dart more uh, perfect. So let's do that for all our four darts and then let's sew them. So our darts are ready to sew, but instead of going to the machine already, I'm going to prepare also uh, the back. So we have two back straps, uh, as you will see on the pattern. And uh, this line is supposed to be a line like this. Uh, I'm still not sure if this is the angle that I want on the center back. But I will do the top anyway and I will learn with this experience and if needed I will change it for you so that when you buy the pattern this will be perfect. So I'm not sure if the angle for this part is like this but for this one it's like this. So we just uh, grab our uh, back strap with our side strap like this and we do like this and the same here. And we will sew here in here and the darts. You can also grab our uh, straps that tie the bow here and we, we can also do them now on our overlock. So we just fold them in half and we sew them. Uh, and another thing that we can already do is do the same that we did for the main fabric. We can do for the, um, for the white fabric. So I will place, uh, don't forget, the two uh, like this and then you fold and you pin and the same here and we pin and now we will have a lot of pieces to, to sew so we can yes finally go to the sewing machine and start sewing everything is ready but I, I want to explain you what I did in each piece to see if uh, you did the same well started sewing on the interior fabric I didn't place, place any elastic I only have uh, six millimeters elastic so this, this is what I uh, must use but on the, um, on, the, um, on the interior fabric I did not use elastic on both of them probably I should have but I didn't uh, on the darts this is something I want to show you in detail, so let me see if I can zoom. Okay, what I did is I stitched a uh, half a centimeter from the edge along here and when I uh, uh, was on the tip of my uh, sewing, maybe we can see it better in this fabric. So we went here and when we reached the end here I stitched a little bit more and I left my uh, two uh, uh, threads in the end. Now I just pull like this, I do a knot and I can cut the excess and this is my dart ready. Okay. 
Then uh, for the um, for the bow in the back, I applied elastic on a bit of the of the bow, but the rest I didn't. This is an option, so I did it. And then uh, with, I applied elastic on the back uh, of each side uh, with the elastic facing uh, outwards on the on this side. Okay, so now on this side. Okay, sorry, I was with my zoom still in and my straps for the bow with a little bit of elastic. Some people say that for the interior fabric you don't need to do the darts. I think we do need to do them because uh, if you don't you will have different shapes uh, on your two fabrics and I'm sure this will not be uh, good for your fitting. So for me, if I do a dart on the main fabric, I'll also do the dart on the other one. That's me, but no, no. So now with my uh, front, let's start with our front. We can grab our strap. And we want this to be so like this so we will place like this and fold you will align and pin and then reaching here you will on your machine carefully you will do it to that side so we will sew this here and we will do exactly the same here okay so fold pin and so both straps to your front. I will apply the elastic on my main fabric. Usually here I like to pin in the middle first, in the middle of the top, because sometimes when you are uh, sewing and uh, unfortunately sometimes we stretch a little bit the fabric, we need to train until we are able to do it without stretching. So I prefer going from the middle to the, to the, to the edge and I, I'll do the same on this side and um, well this is an option this is how I do it you can uh, choose your method but this is how I do it from the center to the sides and I will pin also this one and then I will go to the sewing machine and sew this. While I was doing the video I thought about it uh, for the front strap and I don't like for the top and I, I don't like uh, wide straps so I decided to do smaller straps, uh, one centimeter after they, they are ready, uh, to put here. And I, I will put two of them and they will go f to the top to match the back, one on each side. I think it will be nice. We can reverse um, these two. This can be done now. Uh, and so I cut it for this will be in the pattern so it's not a problem for you but I will I, I cut it for so two straps for each side and I'm gonna sew them with elastic just fold in half place elastic and that's it and we will have our folded uh, four straps uh, for the back we can already um, place right sides facing together so this one with this one and as you know I always like to place my main fabric on top so I do it like this and I turn it around, let me do zoom out, okay. So uh, now I will pin my uh, them together, I will do it uh, on the neck and also on the center back, so here, uh, also this little bit here. Uh, and for now I will not do the arm, the side or the lower part and you will see uh, why in a little bit. Some of you may know how to pin fabric and some may not. So I don't know if I'm doing the right way, but this is how uh, I learned when I was learning some uh, lessons of sewing, not swimwear, but sewing, general sewing. Uh, and the, the, um, the woman there, the teacher, told me to always have the fabric on the table and then place my, my, my fingers 
and with the fabric flat on the surface I put my pin down and up and this is the way she taught me how to uh, pin and I believe it's a good way because uh, if you try to pin uh, with uh, your fabric on your hand for instance uh, probably if you are skilled enough you can do it but you see how different it is and then you have to flat and do it like this and see if on the other side it's okay you see so if you have it flat on the table and you grab your pin and you put your fingers and in the middle you just do it like this do not open do not stretch just place your fingers and press against the table and uh, you may have have noticed that I was uh, giving some stitches uh, in this area here uh, this is because I'm gonna uh, go to my straight stitch machine in, instead of the overlock because to do this angle I know it will be hard on the overlock so I will do it um, on my straight stitch machine uh, but despite that uh, I still uh, prefer giving some stitches so I'm sure that my, my seam and my fabrics stay exactly where I want them to be, to be. So I don't love doing this, but I, I, I prefer. So this is also, of course, an option if you are skilled and you don't need to, better for you. So now we are ready to do the small straps, reverse this place the back uh, the lower back, uh, strap on the front top so neck center back and we'll be back now let's talk a little bit about the back uh, usually I go for reversibles and I've made a poll on our Facebook group and I know many of you like the reversibles I also like reversibles so I, uh, I'm sewing this as a reversible but just to let you know that for instance uh, if this was not just a tutorial and if I was not testing my pattern at this stage what I would do is I would put my back on the right side like this And on my center back, I would do a zigzag stitch using a color that I like, matching my fabric. I would use a zigzag stitch and I would, I would do it all around here, in this area. Uh, this will make the swimsuit stay flat uh, uh, and you will see that the finish is still very beautiful. And for me, I personally, I'm loving the non-reversible and with the, with the stitch uh, inside and you can even choose the color so I really love it but for the purpose of the tutorial I'm not gonna do it uh, and mainly because I am also testing the pattern to see if it doesn't roll over to the outside so that's why I'm not gonna do it but probably I will do it in other areas that I've already tested and know that um, it's good so now we have our back pieces both of them I went to my straight stitch machine as I told you and did this area over here with my straight stitch machine uh, you can choose uh, to trim the excess fabric here uh, but you can test it when when you reverse to see how it goes with the fabric that you have but maybe here it's a little bit bulky so if you on the on the corner so if you want to trim if you if you don't cut the, the threads that you had, it's a good idea to trim here. I'm gonna zoom. So, we are here, right? Like this. So, I'm gonna trim like this, a triangle here and here, okay? I'm gonna try to do it so that you can see. Let me turn a light, so, like this. I know that I'm not cutting my threads, so I'm gonna cut it like this. And now I'm going to cut it, uh, sorry I have to turn this and now I'm going to trim like this. And this will mean when I reverse this to the right side it will not be bulky in this corner. We can already notice the difference if we rehearse our, 
it's already much better. So this is something that you can do. So all the pieces are ready, uh, as I told you. Now let's go to our next steps. Regarding the straps, I know many of you ask this, so I'm going to show you some differences that I did here. Uh, on one of the sides, my elastic stopped here, and I sewed the rest until here without elastic, and this one stopped here. So this is less bulky, but as you, as you know, the elastic gives structure and should be made continuous. Uh, despite that, and I know that that is the way that you are supposed to do, I don't do it, okay? So this is the way I do it. Sorry, maybe it's not the correct one, but it's how I do it. So on this side I did it like this, but on this side I left the elastic until the end and you will see uh, that this side will be much bulkier than this one. And also I left the elastic here until the end, so we will see a huge difference uh, in this area on both back sides. For the, for the straps, I al always start by uh, uh, sewing one centimeter without elastic and then I place the elastic and I sew the rest and I also leave a little bit without the elastic in the, in the end. Well, this is also not the correct way to do it. I think the elastic should be continuous, but for me that's too bulky when I have my strap ready and I don't like it. So I always do my, my straps like this. Uh, and because when we attach this strap to the main fabric, we will always lose half a centimeter because of our seam. So the elastic, in fact, will be uh, very near the beginning of the, um, of, uh, the, in the connection between the strap and the main. So this is another thing that I wanted to tell you. And uh, regarding details, that's it. So I'm going to reverse these four straps with the loop turner and we'll be, we'll be back. I actually decided to make an experience to test something and I did the zigzag stitch on this strap but I didn't do it on this one so I'm gonna leave one each and then we will see how uh, they fall when they are uh, with the knot and we will choose which way we prefer for the future okay so I will leave them like this so front right sides facing together right right sides facing together we will pin we will pin um, all the, this center area this area here um, and also all the bottom area this pattern allows us to have I, I believe six different options for the top the back is always the same but the front changes a lot and what's also interesting is that, another train is coming, <laughs> is that we can insert in all of them, we can insert uh, the padding if you want to, the, the, the insertion. So um, they all fit on the, on the patterns, uh, in all of them, in all of the patterns that we have, they will fit. Uh, this is the smaller one, so probably I would need another shape. Uh, but we could leave if we wanted to on the um, on the fabric that I'm gonna use for the, my inside. Uh, we could leave a hole on the, on the side here. We could could cut it now a small hole here. And so when we will be sewing the sides, the the hole will, would still be there once the top is uh, ready, and we would be able to insert uh, these. I will not do it. Uh, but uh, you can do it if you want uh, in all the versions of this top. As I told you, uh, this pattern has, I believe, six options. I have to see because there are so many, but I believe it's six options. We now have our front right sides facing together already uh, attached except the sides. Uh, we could uh, also um, not have uh, sewn directly the entire top because we want to insert the straps but I prefer to do it like this and now I'm gonna cut a small hole here and here and I'm gonna insert my straps uh, through the side and I'm gonna sew them so this is my uh, preference way uh, never mind that I have some stitches you will see I have some stitches here 
and here. This is because my machine is going crazy and I have to uh, reinforce some areas because the stitch is not good. But I'm gonna cut now a little bit here to insert two straps on one side and two straps on the other. When inserting the straps, face your seam towards the side that you will not wear your uh, swimsuit or towards the, the side that it's not your preference, your favorite side and uh, insert them through the side, both of them together and we will use a straight stitch machine to sew them together. So I'm going to show you in detail, you are always asking about straps, so I'm going to show you in detail how I'm going to do this. Instead of leaving the elastic, I'm going to cut it. I know it will uh, make this line not continuous by cutting the elastic, that maybe the, the, then this will have a breaking uh, point here because it's not continuous but I will do it because I don't want this area to be extremely bulky because of the elastic so I will do like this on one side I will leave the elastic on the other side I will take the elastic and we will see the difference and you can choose whatever uh, method you want so on this side I'm gonna cut it so I'm gonna cut the elastic here and now I'm going with my uh, strap so one is here now another one I use my loop turner to do this because it's easier for me but you can do as you prefer okay now we want we only want to cut uh, half a centimeter from the um, from the, the the strap so I will tuck them in carefully uh, I will pull them from the inside and I will place them side by side like this and now I will sew I will use my straight stitch machine to sew over this area I will also go with the stitch on my overlock stitch a little bit on each side to make sure that when I trim because I will trim this when I trim these uh, threads are secure now I'm going to prepare the other side with uh, the elastic, I, I'm going to leave the elastic. So before inserting the strap on the other side where I'm going to leave the elastic, I'm going to tell you why you will see this cut here on the elastic. I know that uh, elastics are not supposed to be cut it when you are sewing because it can break much easier than if uh, it was in one piece. Uh, but uh, uh, whenever I have curved areas, curved areas uh, and areas angled like this, I always cut the elastic. I know it's not the correct way, but uh, just sharing, okay? This is how I do it, so don't do this. Now I'm going to insert the straps as I did on the other side. I'm going to put uh, a clip and then we will sew. And once the top is ready, we will be able to see the difference on both sides. One, one with the elastic uh, and another one without the elastic. And then you can choose wherever you prefer for, for, for yourself. So you, you can see that I used my uh, straight stitch machine to do a stitch to secure the straps. And then I also did another stitch once more to secure the threads to make sure that this stays flat. I did exactly the same on this side and this will allow me to trim uh, from my line outwards. So I will trim all this excess on both sides. Okay, so our front is ready. We can reverse it to the right side to see how it is. It's a shame that I don't have elastic, proper elastic to place here so that this would stay steady and flat with a, with a uh, wider elastic but I really don't have it so this is what I can do so you see that 
it's not steady as it could be so if you have a, a wider elastic uh, please use it here because it would make uh, the, um, the lower band of your uh, top to stay much nicer than mine uh, well now uh, we want to connect the front strap with the back right here so imagine if we had our swimsuit like this already on the right side this would be like this right so we want these two straps to go here so we have to insert the the, the top front inside our uh, back align the straps and sew them but to do that and to make it easier for us what we will do now is we will do reverse this again we will do the armhole right sides facing together and then we will be back to do this that I was telling you now instead of going directly to my machine to sew this I'm gonna leave this for now and I have my front here I'm gonna uh, roll it roll it roll it roll it roll it to make it small and then I'm gonna put this strap right sides facing together as always I'm gonna use a pin to keep my rolling my tube in place and I'm gonna pin uh, front with front right sides facing together on my lower uh, back bottom strap uh, lower yeah so I'm gonna pin as we did uh, before uh, for the other uh, bands straps whatever and I'm gonna sew uh, on my overlock here and I'm gonna do that and this and then we will match the side okay so let's do it no I remembered why I told you not to do this to make it easier you can do it but to make it easier for you to insert these two uh, straps for the bow we open the side here we insert it here a line and we will sew over the four layers so two from the strap and two from our back pieces so just align this here pin and sew over the four layers do this for both of the sides then we will be ready to go and sew our center back so again we used our elastic stitch on our straight stitch machine and now we are able to cut without cutting the threads right we are uh, able to cut the red ones of course we are able to trim this so that this will stay very beautiful once it's on the correct side so done now we can do the center back uh, seam so just uh, tuck this in pin and let's do this area sorry put this in pin here and so already did my center back and now something that I always do I go to the edges of the of the um, elastic and I trim a little bit the edges the sharp edges because they will be shown on the other side when when it's on the correct side so I always uh, unsharp them with a little bit of trimming so again I know that this is something very you can do it or you may say oh that we should never do that so but again this is how I do it okay now we now we are finally ready to insert our front inside our back to attach the sides and also to attach the, um, the top we will start by attaching the top first and then we will go to the sides so I have my front here and I have my back and I will be facing right sides facing together right so I want to place this here so I open all these I grab the straps and making sure that they are not twisted I will take them to the top of my back and I will place them in place and sew them I use my loop turner to help as I told you before but I want to make sure that they go on the correct direction 
so I want to make this very slowly because it happened before uh, for the straps to be twisted and I don't want them to be twisted so I really 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 want this to go well okay this one is out I'm gonna put a clip And now the other one and you do exactly the same we will do exactly the same for the other side but keep with me so I will explain everything step by step so this will go to this side to this edge and the other one will go to the other edge and we will use the straight stitch machine again to sew this in place now instead of going directly to my machine to sew this I'm gonna leave this for now and I have my front here I'm gonna uh, roll it roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it to make it small and then I'm gonna put this strap right sides facing together as always I'm gonna use a pin to keep my rolling my tube in place and I'm gonna pin uh, front with front right sides facing together on my lower uh, back bottom strap uh, lower yeah so I'm gonna pin as we did uh, before uh, for the other uh, bands straps whatever and I'm gonna sew uh, on my overlock here and I'm gonna do that and this and then we will match the side okay so let's do it so done the top done the lower my, my machine is getting sick of me she says she it's Saturday and we shouldn't be working but she's not the boss <laughs> so I'm gonna trim the excess as I always do here uh, and then we will uh, place the right uh, the side here facing right sides facing together aligning everything aligning the four layers and we will sew over this area so now I'm gonna trim and align to align the sides I start, this is the, the arm, I start on these sides so I fold my fabric properly and I align it with this one. Sometimes I uh, go with my uh, needle and I do some stitches here to make sure that this stays in place but this time I'm just going to place a pin and I'm gonna trust this will be okay. Uh, then uh, for the darts usually I open the seams from the darts on both sides I flatten them and I when I sew I sew with them flat facing each other so maybe this is something that it's not very easy so lay your your fabric on your table without pulling lay it flat together all layers together and pin along as much as you need to make sure that this is flat and the four layers are uh, together and you do this until the end of the bottom here and then we will sew I will use my straight stitch machine to do this but you can do it with your overlock but I will use the straight stitch machine because I want to trim as uh, I'm always used to do there's actually the area where I believe this will be a very complicated area because it's too many layers and too many it's very bulky so my machine will not like this so to make sure this stays exactly where I want it I'm gonna give it some stitches I believe it's called stay stitch right but with my hand I don't know if if this is something that you use this term I'm Portuguese so by the way as you have noticed before so my um, my English is not perfect so sorry for that but it's what I've learned in school so for now it's enough I will be learning more with time and that's it so this is correct and flat and my darts are open and flat 
and now I will go to my sewing machine and I will uh, go and sew this with the straight stitch. Done! Now trim again all the excess without cutting my red thread and we will be ready to start on the other sides of our top. So, so now we have this and the other back right. So again right sides facing together we need to place the straps on the top remember so we can use the side that is still open and we will place these two along here and align there already aligned it now we need to roll this again to make it as small as we can because we want to do the lower strap again so I will secure this here with a pin okay and now I'm gonna pin the bottom here the bottom of the strap of the band I'm going to pin and I'm, I'm going to sew this area and again the strap on top. Okay, so now let's align the side again as we did on the other side. Let's align, flat the, flatten the, um, the darts on both uh, fabrics and sew over the four layers on our side. We are almost done but not yet, so we can reverse this to the right side. Uh, if you are enjoying the video and if you want to uh, leave your comments, please do so. And also, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. Uh, it's important for us to have uh, your feedback. So, subscribing is also a way of giving feedback. So, here we have our top. But now, and please bear with me until the end. I will put it on and take some pictures for you in the end. Uh, but now uh, we still need to find a way to close it here. So I'm going to do that using a clasp. I don't know if you have one or not, but for this pattern that's what I like to use. Uh, if you think uh, you would prefer to tie a small uh, knot like or bow or whatever as uh, we are doing here on top, uh, you just need to do this a little bit longer and it will be okay but I'm gonna put a little clasp that I have uh, just folding and sewing and putting the clasp and try it on to show you hope you liked it and uh, to see you in the near future in another one of our tutorials before we go and for those of you who didn't leave already uh, we wanted to see the differences uh, here remember so one side, this side is bulkier than this one because of the excess rubber elastic we had. And on the front, if you see here, I'm gonna zoom so that I'm gonna try to show you. Uh, so we have this one. It's the one that we uh, cut it the elastic. And we have this one, okay? So it's a... I mean, if we did a stop, uh, top stitch now here, all around, this would stay uh, much nicer, you see? But, but since I'm not going to go with the top stitch, I don't like the way this uh, sticks out, okay? So you, you may choose uh, as you prefer. For the back, as I was telling you, this is the side with no elastic on the, the corner here and this is the side with the elastic and you can see it's a bit higher and it's bulkier okay 